Hello statistics students, this is Jamie Amy, and this video is our discussion on section 10.2, regression. Okay, we're going to start by talking about the best fitting straight line. We call that the regression line. We saw a few graphs in the last section where we had data values on a scatter plot that kind of looked like this. And we talked about, well, what if there is a good line that can capture how those variables react to each other. That's that regression line we're talking about. You may have heard it called the best fit sometimes. Okay, every line has an equation. And so the regression line has an equation that we call the regression equation. Uh, it's the equation of the regression line. It expresses the relationship between x, which we call the explanatory variable, and y, which we call the response variable. I like to think of it as y responds to whatever x does. Okay, we're gonna be asked to write regression equations and then use those equations to make predictions. Okay, it's not too bad to do that. You'll go under stat test and you'll run linear regression t-test. And at the top of your output screen, you'll see this y equals a plus bx. Well, you might recall that the equation of a line in slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And this is the same. The coefficient in front of the letter x is the slope, and the constant is the y-intercept. So what you'll do is scroll down on your output screen. You'll find a, and you'll plug it into the equation. That'll be your y-intercept. And then you'll find b, and you'll plug it into the equation. That'll be your slope. You'll leave the y, you'll leave the x, you'll leave the equal sign, and you'll have your regression equation. Now, as statisticians, we're often asked to make predictions. And sometimes we're going to use that equation, but sometimes we're not. And I'll explain when you, we do use the equation and when we don't, using the flowchart below. But let's pretend we are not using the equation. How are we going to make our predictions? We're going to use the mean. Okay, so whenever asked to make a prediction, you're either going to use your equation or you're just going to use the mean. This flowchart uh, breaks it down more specifically. It's called Strategy for Predicting Values of Y. Okay, the first question you'll have to ask yourself is, is my regression equation a good model? Well, if you find that there is a correlation between your two variables, if the lowercase r was strong enough for you to say, okay, there's a correlation between these variables, then your answer to this, is the regression equation a good model, would be yes. And you'll head this way, and then you'll use that regression equation to make predictions. Well, let's say the uh, only other case, which is your lowercase r, your um, correlation coefficient was not large enough. It didn't get close enough to positive one or negative one, and therefore you concluded no correlation. These two variables here, they have no correlation. If that is the case, then your answer to this is the regression equation a good model would be no, and you would head this way. And in that case, you would just use y bar as your prediction. Okay? We're going to see an example now where we um, use each of these. Okay, we're going to use the shoe print um, and height example from section 10.1 to get us started. And if you recall from that, uh, we ran the linear regression t-test and we got an r equals 0 0.591. Well, our critical value was 0 0.878. So if you recall the graph, and you know what, I can just go back a few slides and show you that graph. Just, it's worth the time. This visual right here, okay? So this is the one where our R, 0 0.591, landed right here. And so if you recall, we said, okay, no correlation. Since we said no correlation, we are not going to use the equation to make predictions. If we say no correlation, we are going to use the mean for predictions. OK, 
Okay. All right, so let's move forward with that. Go back to where we were. Okay, so, um, and concluded that there is not sufficient evidence to support a linear correlation, okay? And what that means is that the regression equation is not a good model, and therefore we will use y bar, which is the mean, to make our prediction. So we were asked to predict the height of a person with a shoe print length of 29 centimeters. Well, if we don't have a good equation to plug that into, then we would just say, all right, we don't have a good equation to plug that into because we didn't find a good strong correlation, and therefore we're just going to use the average height of our samples and use that as our prediction. So this 177.3 centimeters tall is the average of the y's. If you remember the, the heights, those were our y values. So this right here, you have um, a couple options. You can type in these five numbers, one, two, three, four, five, add them up and divide by five, and that is one way to get the 177.3. Or you can type them into list one, run one variable stats, It'll look like X bar on the output screen, but that's another way to get the 177.3. And erase that because it kind of covered our answer. And so in that case, our prediction for a person with a shoe print length of 29 centimeters is that that person is 177.3 centimeters tall. Okay, let's change the scenario. Let me erase some of this water like right there and there. Okay, let's change the scenario. Let's say that we gather more than five um, pairs of data. This time we're going to gather um, 40 pairs of data. So we're going to get 40 males and we're going to find their shoe print lengths, pair them up with their heights, and then see if there's a correlation. Okay, well if we were to do that, and actually there is a list of that data in the back of um, the text, but we're just going to say Theoretically, we went through that process and we found that our R this time is 0 0.813. That is much higher than our R from the last time, the 0 0.591. It's much closer to 1, which means it's a much stronger um, correlation coefficient. And in fact, it surpasses our critical value this time because with a larger sample, our critical value decreased to only 0 0.0312. Okay, so we compare these two right here, and therefore we would say, yeah, we do think there is a, a strong linear correlation between shoe prints and the heights of males. I'm just going to sketch the graph of these two variables right here, and then I'll erase it. I just want you to get the visual on this compared to the last one where we did not have a correlation. Okay, so our bar, the critical value, is set at 0 0.312. 0 it's not set very high at all. That's our C. CD equals three zero, <laughs> 0 0.0312. And our uh, lowercase r makes it like way up to here, I'd say, r equals 0 0.83813. And so this is the correlation region this time. And our r definitely made it into that correlation region. So in this scenario, we say, yes, there is a correlation. Okay, I'm going to erase that. It's kind of cluttering up what we need to write next. The point is, you check where your lowercase r falls on the graph, and if it is not a correlation, then you do not use the equation. If you check where lowercase r is on the graph and it makes it into the correlation region, then you do use the equation. Okay, if you need to pause the video and rewind and write that down, that's maybe a nice summary that can help you. 
Okay, so here we have the regression equation is a good model. Therefore, to make any predictions, we will use that equation. So we will take our output screen. If, you, if we were to have actually run this, um, if we scrolled down, we would have found the A equals 80.9 and the B equals 3.22. So this right here is our regression equation that we would use for predictions. Now we would take that 29 centimeters that they're asking us to make a prediction for, and we would plug it in right there for x. So you can see it in the next step, substitute it in, and type that in your calculator carefully, and if you do so, you'll get 174.3 centimeters. So our prediction now, with 4A, person with the shoe print length of 29 centimeters, is that their height is 174.3 centimeters tall. So, it's nice to see these two side by side. Let me switch colors, or maybe just highlight. Um, everything up here was leading to this prediction of 177.3 centimeters tall. And that all came from us saying that the regression equation was not a good model. And then everything down here was all leading to our prediction that that person is 174.3 centimeters tall. And that came from our um, conclusion that our regression equation was a good model. Okay, so compare the yellow to the green, the top screen and the bottom half of the screen. Rewind and watch that again if you need to. There's a lot of details in there, I know. So take your time and rewind and watch it again if you need to. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to address marginal change, which is the amount that a variable changes when the other variable changes by exactly one unit. So that's why it's called marginal change. It has to do with um, one variable changes by exactly one. How much does the other one change? Okay, let's look at uh, our example. The regression equation of y hat equals 80.9 plus 3.22x. That has a slope right here of 3.22 coefficient before the x is always the slope. 3.22 can be put in the form of a fraction. You can, you can put it over 1 if you want to think about it as rise over run like that. And that's where that 1 comes into play. And what this means is that if we increase the shoe print length by exactly 1 centimeter, then the predicted height of the person would increase by exactly 3.22 centimeters. I like marginal change. It's, it's uh, interesting to look at it that way. And so let's say you go again. Let's say you increase the shoe print length by 2 centimeters. Then the person would become another 3.22 centimeters tall. If you increase by 3 centimeters, they would become an additional 3.22 centimeters tall. So nice way to wrap your yeah. mind around um, what marginal change means by looking at that shoe print length compared to heights example. Okay, we have, sometimes we have, points that are called influential points. And those would be points that strongly affect the graph of the regression line. We have a visual coming up on that, but let's look at it in, um, in the form of an example first. Observe what happens if we include this additional data for the 40 shoes. So we're going to throw this additional random guy in there. So we're saying that this guy is um, 35 centimeters tall with a shoe print length of 25 centimeters, which is not possible <laughs> physically. So, but watch what that one point does to our graph. So here was our best fit line before. And then when we throw in this point, it's called an influential point because look what it does to our graph. It makes that line change dramatically. And if that is the case, the additional point um, 
is considered an influential point because it changes the regression line considerably. Now you'll want to check definitely if there is an error in that and you'll want to throw out any outliers of course and it appears to be that that influential point is um, was made in error so keep an eye out for those. Okay that will conclude our discussion on section 10.1 I will see you next time for our discussion on 11.1.